I want to now show a little film clip that, and this is a remarkable little, just like two minutes long. It's, this is a, uh, disc uh, what's b it's basically a trailer for a documentary called The City Dark. It's called The City Dark. Uh, and it, um, I, it was re played on some uh, public stations this summer. Um, but it's not that well known, though it deserves to be better known. But this, in re with remarkable gentleness and compression, this um, uh, little film clip or video clip captures a certain fundamental um, cosmological and psychological condition that we find ourselves in that I think we can all uh, relate to, but it does it with great uh, discernment. The twinkling of cities at night always says to me, look at us as a species. This is what we do. What's happened over my lifetime is that you have a some kind of sprawl with city lights spilling out into the surrounding regions. society is kind of taking over the wilderness, but it's happening slowly and no one really notices it. When we add light to the environment, it's an alteration of, of habitat. Our society is moving more and more towards a 24-7 lifestyle, and we don't really understand what the long-term health consequences are. I've seen twice the Milky Way in New York when there's a blackout. <laughs> it's so sad because I know what's above me. Once it gets dark here, it just doesn't get dark anymore. Most human routines make no reference to the cosmos at all. So you might say, well, why do you need it? If our civilization didn't see the stars and didn't see how big the universe was, would they come to believe that they're more important in this much tinier universe because that's all they see? I worry that our lack of contact with the sky is doing something to us that's very subtle. Who knows what the ultimate effect will be? Sorry, we couldn't get uh, better better audio for some reason. This thing's not working right, but um, Chad managed to at least amp it up enough so we could hear hear the words. Um, Heidegger said, um, "The mortal has turned night into day." And, to, and has turned day into a state of harassed unrest. Okay, see how that captures like the solar one-sidedness of our civilization going back to w let there be light and you know, the, the identification with the sun and the, the modern enlightenment and really what electricity is and, and our, con our cities are, which, which she, ca she said well at the beginning, like there's something beautiful about those twinkling lights and it's our, it's our home and it, it kind of represents our, our capacity to um, control our fate but create comfort, etc. But if there's one thing that the postmodern has brought to the modern is a recognition of the unintended consequences of, of modernity. And uh, those consequences range from <laughs> that kind of eclipse of the, of the night sky, of not being able to see the many stars, the, the deep space, and in a way getting locked into a, a, the light of common day. Remember Wordsworth? The light of common day. Um, we all sense, even, even perhaps especially astronomers, that numinosity exists in the heavens. 
I mean, um, virtually every astronaut has come back going, whoa, you wouldn't believe, you know, I had a mystical experience uh, when I was uh, um, in space. And uh, when they were out in the, when they were, especially if they were outside of the capsule and were, you know, lo look, looking at the uh, Earth and the rest of space, stars, the galaxies. Um, we all have a sense of that numinosity, also of the transcendence of, of uh, this, our human life by something that's much, much greater. Also by modes of temporal unfolding that far transcend the, the clock that we have run, are running our, our, our days and nights with um, in the mechanistic way <coughs> in, in the modern period. And, and they gently hint at, like, what happens if we're not conscious, if we never see the stars at night, if we never see the big picture, if we come to think that the only game in town is, the, is human urban civilization and what's really important to us is only that, uh, what does that do? Um, and what are going to be the long-term effects of it? Even beyond the ecological, which they, which they certainly refer to, but there's a psychological, cosmological delusion of li that comes from living in that, in that hyper solar uh, eternal day um, that modernity has attempted to create, which is perfectly equivalent to the modern attempt to always be on this ascent, like growth, economic development. It's always onward and upward. It's always upward. It's an, it's, a, it's an identification with the sun in its upward movement to the high noon, the highest po position, the heroic apotheosis, um, the God's eye level. And um, what it's not taking into account, as we'll uh, explore next time we're together, is that the sun has to go down in, in reality in and, and in, in the myths in our own psyche, in our own lives. And this, is, this translates to right into the most concrete forms of like how, do we, our, how does our society deal with death? Um, I mean, we are bankrupting, and we bankrupted, we're bankrupting the United States uh, uh, e economy, I mean, partly through um, the wars and the... Um, unbelievable military industrial complex, but also through uh, a, an enormous effort to stave off death at any, and, and to deny death and to, um, you know, do what are called heroic measures of, to, 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 to stop um, the inevitable from happening, uh, because there's no trust in the bigger cosmic, uh, death and rebirth of all things. There's no, there's no sense of grounding in the deep archetypal um, uh, cycles of existence because we're so locked into a narrow identity of this life, this present moment, this ego, this body. Th uh, if this goes, the, everything's going to go. And so there's a, that, that uh, denial of death